All right, guys, welcome back to Valorant News. This has been a crazy Valorant off-season so far, but this has got to be the wildest day so far. Not only do we have major rumours as to what's going on with these rosters, but what is going on in the APAC region. Bleed Esports, the organisation that ascended last year to get through and have two seasons in the VCT Pacific, they have been kicked out of the VCT by Riot Games and replaced by Boom Esports. What does that mean for the players? How has this happened so last minute? What does it mean for Aspas as well, who was rumoured to be going to this organisation where is he going to end up now? How has this come out of nowhere? Very much into your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. We have so many storylines to get into today. Starting here with Bangzera, confirmed yesterday, gone from the 100 Thieves lineup. This is a really big deal. Bang has been with 100 Thieves and I, did, I think did a pretty damn great job. I think Bang is a player who has been almost somewhat underrated. He was rated highly when he first came in for very good reason. I think his kind of reputation took a bit of a, you know, stink as 100 Thieves didn't quite deliver at the end of the season the way they might have liked to. But I think Bang's a really good player. And I think that Sentinels who are going to get him have actually scouted, not really scouted, I mean, he's a known quantity on some level, but I think they've chosen a very good option here. So, 100T confirm, Bang is gone. Obviously, Stella is like, hey, I mean, what's going on here? We only got a couple of gifts when we left. And um, here's Stella, with, or here's uh, <laughs> Bang with a five-minute montage of his departure. But um, as he went on, to say, hardest decision of my career. I know this makes some people happy and some people sad. I wish I helped 100T to win more, but in the end, I'm proud of what we accomplished. So we're pretty sure he's going to go to Sentinels. And I thought this is pretty funny here from Rob Moore because, uh, well, he's just clouded on randoms on the timeline, basically. So the, the deal is that Narrate and Bang are coming in. And look, when this gets confirmed, because we've got all the bleed stuff to discuss, but as and when this gets confirmed, you know, we're going to have to talk about how much firepower there actually is there on Sentinels now, because... Like, they had firepower before. They absolutely have firepower now, as far as I'm concerned, bringing these two guys into their roster. Some won't agree, though. Mid and mid, joining mid. Report on a real team like G2, please. And uh, Rob Moore is like, how many trophies did G2 win this year? Or even when, you know, who went farther at champs? L, take. Show me your cologne cut of it. And he's like, look, this is Valorant, little bro. What are you talking about? So, um, yeah, just the fact that Rob Moore is in the replies to this tweet, I thought were pretty funny because it is obviously leaking what might be going on in his own organization. There is this rumor as well. The plat chat we're mentioning how they did trials, Sentinels, between Bang and Xander, and apparently Bang was just the better player in the trials they did, and therefore has been signed. It's always interesting, because Xander's done very well in Tier 2, and is clearly a top-quality player that 100T are going to look to sign now instead of Bang, we believe. But at the same time, Xander has been farming in Tier 2. Not farming, but you know what I'm saying, right? Bang has looked good, and he's been playing Tier 1 opposition. Bang has looked very good, or Xander has looked very good, but he's been playing Tier 2 opposition, so he's actually the better player. You're not really going to know until you do Trials. That is the way things have been. There's also this from Sentinels. George Geddes was talking about this article here, talking about Sentinels' growth and development, saying that after making 3 million pretty much in revenue last year, they've made that in the first six months of this year. So Sentinels are making some steps in the right direction, and pretty Pretty confident they can even break even so yeah lots of sentinels financial details coming out last night as well and you know there would be more time to dive into this if there wasn't plenty of other things that we've got to get into as well another note rocket bullets is back on the timeline here can you believe it so rocket after a few days away decided all right you know what i can't go cold turkey on twitter i'm gonna come back gonna drop some more spreadsheets so uh you know an absolute classic and i just noticed he's changed his name here to drg aspas because uh, well dragon ranger gaming are going to be looking for someone to join their team. And, uh, well, there's no Aspas linked as it stands. But, well, we're going to get into the Aspas stuff because it is absolutely fascinating. And according to his latest spreadsheet anyway, the rumour has been that Aspas is still not going back to Lev. He may do now after all this. But Demon 1 to Lev is like a done deal. So Aspas returning to Lev wouldn't make that much sense. And most of the teams in the Americas, we think they know what they're doing. Apart from maybe NRG, who still haven't confirmed things yet. It is interesting here that he has Marder as well joining NRG because we thought Marder to Lev was a thing but then Alejandro mentioned that it was actually going to be to NRG so um, but then Marder was clowning that and saying that ain't true so I don't know what's true but um, what I do know is true is that Bleed Esports have been kicked out of the franchise league so let's get into that. Tanmay reports on this a few hours before it was actually made official that there were rumours that Bleed Esports VCT slot is being re-evaluated and we've talked about this now for a good couple of years basically since the VCT 
OTT first came round as to what is going on with these franchise spots in the longer term when changes might need to be made. Because, you know, let's be real, evil geniuses are an organization in the Americas and they had basically left esports or it seemed like they were on the verge of just calling it a day entirely. Their organization was in shambles, potentially still is in shambles. So many problems over there at EG. So the debate was, well, maybe at some point, EG just go and then some other organization that's come up as a guest slot or whatever, they potentially get to stay for the longer term. I don't know. That was a debate that we had. But of course, Riot didn't do that. They could have, given the way that Riot have structured their leagues, they could have kicked out EG and chosen another replacement on a full-time basis. And that would be fair enough. Like, that's how it works. That's why it's a partnered league. The teams have to give back and follow the rules. And if they don't, they can be axed. But the fact that Riot didn't get rid of EG made me think, okay, what they're going to do is reevaluate in a couple of years. That was the rumor anyway, that after like 2026, then Riot are going to reevaluate all their partner teams and decide, okay, do we want to keep you as a partner? Do we not? Do we want to choose another partner instead? But that seemed to be down the line. So Bleed Esports must have done something pretty egregious to get kicked out of the league. And that is what has happened today. So Riot come out with this statement today, an update for VCT 2025. Riot Games removes Bleed Esports from the VCT Pacific and promotes Boom Esports. The organization, of course, that lost in that epic grand finals the other day to Sinprasa Gaming and, you know, maybe a blessing in disguise in some sense because they lose and now they get this opportunity as a new partner. I also will say it's cool. I know it's a different situation to the guard G2 situation that we had last year, but it's nice that Riot's first thought was like, okay, let's actually promote another team because you know, what they were doing before is they were like, oh, well, the guards are going to quit. So unlucky guys, I guess there's no Ascension team this year. Whereas here they're saying, all right, we're going to kick one org and we are going to promote another org. We're not just going to drop it down to 11 teams again or whatever. So um, I'm glad that this was their initial decision in the first place. But have a listen to this. Bleed Esports was terminated due to its failure to comply with critical reporting requirements and other key obligations under the team participation agreement. Removal of a team from the Right Games Esports ecosystem is not something we take lightly. However, due to persistent operational failures of the team, Bleed Esports will no longer participate in VC Pacific to protect the best interest of the players and the league. The individual players were informed of the decision as soon as it was made to allow them to explore other opportunities as quickly as possible, which unfortunately are probably drying up or have already dried up. Therefore, merit-based qualification, Boom Esports, the runner-up, will be promoted into the vacated slot. This change does not affect the 2020 25 format. The league will go forward with 12 teams as planned. So um, how about this, right? Bleed Esports, this team that have clearly been a bit problematic on many levels, but um, they have the bag, right? Like, no doubt about it. Ye goes in there, gets the bag, plays one stage, gets kicked out of there, and gets the last chopper out of Singapore, basically, while the team collapses around him. And, you know, basically, Bleed say, deeply disappointed in the outcome, but clearly like they've messed up somewhere right you'd think and they say they've been in constant communication with riot to deliver the deliverables required in that team participation agreement but we were unable to rectify these issues in a satisfactory manner so we're out of there so what's going on well there have been some rumors as to the situation as pure it says according to a former bleed employee there were instances where players were delayed payment for a couple of months so this is the point right if you're a franchise team you've got to pay your players on time right? it's pretty gold standard you know, it's pretty standard stuff and if you're not doing that then um well riot are not going to be so happy with you because they're going to say well why don't we just have an organization instead who are going to pay their players on time there was also some drama as well apparently where they had a warning by riot because they tried to participate in some third party cs tournament without approval which is required so they just did a few things it seems the riot weren't happy with they couldn't resolve them so they've been kicked out of the league but happening now is kind of crazy and especially when Riot say the players were informed of this decision as soon as it was made. Well, Legia and the guys on the team are saying they heard about it 30 minutes ago, as in they heard about it right when the announcement was happening. So it seems like, at least assuming this is true, that the players informed of this decision as soon as it was made you know, apparently the decision was made 30 minutes before this tweet went out, which seems kind of doubtful because there were rumours now for a couple of days. I think maybe some other leakers were saying that for a couple of days now they'd heard about this, especially when this guy, who does social 
officials for various organizations, I think formerly Bleed as well, said that he'd heard about this last week. So, uh, you know, the rumor is that the decision was made like a week ago, like certainly several days ago. This was at least in conversation. Maybe the decision wasn't finalized, but um, he says he got the confirmation that this was happening last night and now it's been announced. So how come this guy knew about this a week ago and then knew that it was confirmed a day ago, but yet the players contrary to what riots say, only found out 30 minutes before this tweet went live. So it is a little bit confusing, to be honest. But um, as Legia says, coach of the team, well, well, jobless overnight. Heard about 30 minutes ago. Guess I'm looking for a team. And as Ye says, deserves a good team. Nothing but good things to say about Legia. So Ye was on this organization. He was on this roster. It was a bit of a disaster and he left. But um, Crazy Guy gives his perspective as well. He says that, yeah, every Bleed member got the news 30 minutes before it was announced. He's never had to worry about salary debt since joining the team so apparently as far as he's concerned that was okay he does mention that the organization is ready to support another challenges ascension run but it would be interesting right let's say bleeds they return to ascension and they win it again in the pacific next year to get promoted again what do riot say like do they say unlucky guys you can't come in because we kicked you because you're a terrible organization okay well well done you won ascension but we don't want you in so we're going to force your players to play for some other team are they going to do that or a bleed able to say, all right, yeah, we fixed it, guys. Don't worry. You know, we're going to come back in now. We've fixed up the processes. I don't know, but it's confusing, isn't it? And, um, well, this is Crazy Guy's perspective on it. But there's two other key pieces to mention here as well. The first one being, where's Aspas going? Because Purist says, and we'd heard this rumor now in various ways for some time, that Aspas to Bleeze was near enough a done deal. Like, Aspas had decided he wanted to leave the Leviathan roster because he didn't like the management, basically. He wanted to leave the Americas, go and play in the Pacific and Bleed Esports were the organization offering the biggest bag with the biggest potential upside. So that was going to be a deal. Like Aspas to Bleed was like nearly done, it seems, instead of yay, basically from the previous year. But now that ain't happening. Bleed aren't there anymore. And the Boom Esports team that just came second in Ascension, they're coming up. So where does Aspas go? Does he go to Dragon Ranger Gaming, as we talked about? Does he go to DRX? Does he go to PaperX? Does he go to Zeta Division? Does he go to some other team in that region? Or does he return to the Americas in some way, come back to Lev, go to NRG? I don't know. Where does it leave Aspas? Like, it's such a massive spanner in the works that Aspas is now available and a free agent again, especially given teams, some teams have locked down their rosters, but Aspas might make them think twice. The other thing is about Ye, because given that the organization is now dusted, Ye is now an unrestricted free agent. No buyout involved. If someone wants Ye, they can go out and get him. And um, he was linked, actually, to Evil Geniuses as a trial not that long ago. And as he says, I'm a UFA for the new season. So it's actually going to work out incredibly well, I think, for Ye here. And this was hilarious as well. A great way to finish the video. Also, I feel really bad for Atlagia at Scary. Of course, two of his, his coach and one of his teammates, they deserve to be in franchising. The news is honestly awful. I really hope they're land on their feet. But um, I love the way that he just deliberately excludes everyone else on the team. Like he could easily have added his entire team and his former teammates. But you know, crazy guy is not getting anywhere near. Yeah, he's Twitter timeline to so his like scary, the guy that I liked, you know, want the best for him. Legia, coach, want the best for him. Anyone else, screw them basically. Seems to be Ye's perspective. And I don't really blame him the way that the rumors were on that team last season. I guess one other quick thing, DSG disguised. They were effectively the Bleed Academy last year. And now that's chalked as well. So, you know, it's all come crumbling down. Very much into into your thoughts in the comments. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care. And I'll see you next time.